Welcome back into the world of cross-dressing stories. Now, please consider subscribing and check out my Patreon for more exclusive goodies. You know, it's funny looking back on how it all started, those quiet, secret moments that belonged only to me within the safety of my own home. I'd wait for those rare afternoons when the house was empty, the sound of the key turning in the lock signaling my freedom. Each time, with a mix of excitement and nervousness, I'd pull out the box from the back of my closet, the one containing all my carefully selected items. Silky scarves, soft blouses, and my favorite, a beautifully patterned skirt that swirled just right when I turned. In those hours, draped in fabrics that felt like whispered secrets against my skin, I found comfort. But as liberating as those moments were, they were equally confining. I was trapped, you see, caught between the four walls of my home and the vast uncharted world outside that I feared would not understand or accept me. Then there was Lisa, my rock, my partner in every aspect of life. One evening, nestled in the soft glow of the living room with a cup of tea in hand, I found the courage to let her into this secluded part of my life. I remember how my hands shook slightly as I spoke, the words feeling foreign yet freeing as they hung in the air between us. I told her everything, from the exhilaration of dressing up to the isolation that came with it. Lisa, bless her, listened with such kindness and patience, her hand reaching out to squeeze mine, grounding me. She didn't interrupt, not once, she just understood. And that's how we found ourselves planning a weekend getaway to Bath. It's perfect, Lisa said with a sparkle in her eye, her enthusiasm infectious. It's busy enough that you won't feel like all eyes are on you, but beautiful enough that you'd want them to be, just a little. Bath, with its cobblestone streets and vibrant shopping scenes, seemed like the ideal place for me to take those first tentative steps outside. We spent nights poring over maps and tourist guides, planning our routes around the city, pinpointing the bustling spots where I could blend in, feeling a part of the crowd yet distinct in my own right. It was more than just a trip. It was a carefully laid plan to bridge the gap between the person I was privately and the person I wanted to be publicly. With Lisa by my side, I felt ready, or at least as ready as one could feel. We were turning a page, and every part of me buzzed with a cocktail of fear and excitement. It was a new beginning, a chance to finally step out, not just out of my home, but out of the shadows. The thought was daunting, but with Lisa's hand in mine, it felt possible. More than possible, right? In the warm, golden light of our old hotel room, the kind that only seems to exist in places steeped in a bit of history, Lisa and I sprawled out a city map across the small coffee table. It was covered with notes and little circles around the areas we had walked through that morning. The room was cozy, with thick drapes and plush cushions that made you feel like you were in your own little world. A perfect backdrop for the nervous excitement that was building inside me. As we leaned over the map, Lisa's finger traced the route we planned for the evening. We'll start here, she pointed to a large street-level car park, shielded by hedges. It's busy enough to feel anonymous, but not so crowded as to be overwhelming. Her voice was steady, a contrast to the flutter of butterflies in my stomach. She looked up, her eyes meeting mine. How are you feeling about all this? I hesitated, my heart pounding. Nervous, but excited, I admitted the words tinged with a vulnerability I only ever showed to her. Lisa smiled, her hand reaching across to squeeze mine, her touch reassuring. That's perfectly normal, Jamie. I'm here, every step of the way. Turning back to our preparations, she pulled out the outfit we had chosen together after much deliberation, an elegant, flowing top with a subtle floral pattern, paired with a classic pair of dark jeans and a comfortable yet chic pair of boots, perfect for the cobblestone streets. Each piece had been selected not just for its style, but for the confidence it instilled in me, transforming not just my appearance, but my spirit. Hold these up, Lisa said, handing me the clothes. I draped them across myself, looking in the full-length mirror propped against the hotel room wall. The reflection looking back at me was both thrilling and terrifying. It was me, but also the me that was about to step into a world that had never really seen me before. Lisa watched me, her gaze supportive. You look amazing, Jamie, truly yourself. It was more than just putting on clothes. It was about affirming my identity, 
about the outer reflecting the inner in a way I had never dared before. The room, with its soft lighting and the comforting presence of Lisa, felt like a cocoon, shielding me from the outside world for just a moment longer. We've scouted the area, you know the route, and your outfit is perfect, Lisa reiterated, her voice a blend of encouragement and practicality. Now all you need to do is walk out that door with your head held high. I'll be with you, no matter what. Her words, so full of unwavering belief and love, bolstered my resolve. This was it. The moment where I would take the leap from the private safety of cross-dressing to the public reality of expressing who I really am. The plan was set, the outfit chosen, and my most trusted ally by my side. Ready as I'd ever be, I took a deep breath and with it, a step towards a new chapter of my life. The autumn air was crisp and chilly as Lisa and I stepped out of the converted stable rooms of our quaint hotel. My heart raced with each step, the soft clack of my heels against the old cobblestone path, marking a rhythm to the flurry of emotions inside me. This brief walk to the car was my very first public appearance as Jamie, the persona I had nurtured in secrecy for so long. Dressed in the outfit that Lisa and I had so carefully chosen, I felt a surge of confidence. But it was a fragile kind, easily shaken by the realness of the moment. I could feel the open air around me so different from the secluded safety of our room. My eyes darted around, half expecting someone to appear and read my discomfort, my secret. But the path was quiet, save for the rustling of leaves stirred by a gentle breeze. Lisa walked beside me, her presence a calming force. I could see the mixed emotions play across her face, pride in my bravery, tinged with concern for the vulnerabilities this step exposed. Her hand found mine, giving it a reassuring squeeze. You're doing great, she whispered, just loud enough for me to hear over the beat of my own heart. Reaching the car felt like an achievement, a small victory in the grand scheme of my journey. Once inside, the familiar confines of the vehicle offered a temporary reprieve. As we drove back towards the bustling streets of Bath, the fading light of late afternoon wrapped around us. The gray hues of dusk blended everything outside into shadows and silhouettes, providing an anonymity that eased some of my nerves. The car journey was quiet, the only sounds the soft hum of the engine and the occasional murmur of the radio. I sat, lost in thought, rehearsing scenarios in my mind. The city lights began to twinkle in the distance, signaling our approach and the impending challenge of truly stepping into the public eye. Each light felt like an eye that might soon turn towards me. Lisa sensed my growing tension and reached over to turn off the radio. Remember, Jamie, this is about you embracing who you are. No matter what happens, I'm proud of you for taking this step. Let's just blend in and enjoy the evening. Her words, sincere and soothing, helped calm the storm inside me. The anonymity of the car was a cocoon, but I knew it wouldn't last. Soon I would have to step out into the world, not just as a figure in the distance, but up close where the lights were brighter and the eyes more focused. The drive gave me that necessary moment to gather strength, to adjust to the weight of the visibility I was about to command. As we parked in the crowded city car park, surrounded by the noise and normalcy of a typical shopping evening, the reality of what I was about to do settled in. It was exhilarating and terrifying, but with each passing moment, the scales tipped slightly more towards exhilaration. This was it, the turning point, where I would walk not just in the shadows but in the light, where being seen was the point, and perhaps, in time, being understood. The car came to a gentle stop in the bustling car park, the noise and chaos of early evening shoppers filling the air. As Lisa turned off the ignition, the reality of the moment hit me with full force. Around us, people moved with purpose, lost in their pre-holiday rush, oblivious to the personal milestone about to unfold just meters away from them. My heart was pounding so loudly I could almost hear it echoing in the car, a rhythmic reminder of what I was about to do. You ready? Lisa asked, her voice a mix of excitement and concern. She reached over to squeeze my hand, her touch steady and reassuring. I nodded, not fully trusting my voice, and opened the car door. The cool air hit me and for a moment, my breath caught in my throat. Every step towards the parking ticket machine felt like walking through treacle, my movements deliberate and overly cautious. As I stood in line for the parking ticket, the sounds of the city seemed to amplify around me. 
The beep of the machine as each ticket was dispensed, the shuffle of feet, the distant laughter of children, all these mundane sounds formed the backdrop of a scene that felt anything but ordinary to me. Purchasing a parking ticket, a task I had performed countless times before, suddenly embodied a profound act of visibility. As I pressed the buttons and waited for the ticket to print, I could feel the eyes of passersby briefly touching on me, assessing my presence without lingering. It was both a relief and a reaffirmation of my fears. When the ticket finally clattered into the tray, I grasped it, the paper feeling impossibly significant in my hand. This small, printed piece of paper was more than just proof of payment. It was a tangible marker of my first true public appearance as Jamie. Turning back to the car, I caught Lisa's eye. She was watching through the windshield, her face alight with pride and a smile spreading across her lips. Her presence anchored me, reminding me of the normalcy of what we were doing. We were just another couple out for an evening in the city. And yet, for us, this moment was transformative. Walking back to the car with the ticket in hand, I felt a mix of exhilaration and relief. I had done it. I had stepped into the public eye, and the sky hadn't fallen. Each step back felt lighter, more confident. This was it, the first of many steps to come, each one a stride toward living openly and authentically. The evening lay ahead, promising more challenges, but also more opportunities to experience the freedom of being truly myself. With Lisa by my side and the first hurdle crossed, I felt ready to face whatever came next. As Lisa and I stepped through the bustling entrance of Marks and Spencer, the bright lights and the cacophony of shoppers' voices enveloped us. I took a deep breath, trying to steady the flutter of nerves that danced wildly in my stomach. Lisa gave me an encouraging nod, and we momentarily clutched hands before I whispered, I think I'll try walking around by myself for a bit. She squeezed my hand in response, her eyes conveying a mixture of pride and worry. I'll be close by if you need me, she reassured me, her voice steady yet filled with unspoken concern. I ventured forward alone, each step growing increasingly confident as I navigated through the ground floor. The vibrant displays of clothing and the hum of conversations provided a temporary shield, making me feel just like another shopper participating in the weekend ritual. My heart still raced, but excitement began to edge out the nerves. Emboldened by the anonymity of the crowd, I decided it was time to ascend to the upstairs departments. As I made my way to the escalator, the density of shoppers thinned and the expansive layout of the upper floor offered less cover. The lingerie section, with its open and brightly lit environment, felt starkly different from the protective bustle below. Here, the racks were more spaced out, the area felt more exposed. I could feel the openness like a spotlight, and a slow trickle of vulnerability seeped in. However, buoyed by the small victories of the evening, I pressed on, flipping through the hangars with a feigned casualness that belied my internal turmoil. After a few minutes, I gathered enough courage to head towards the shoe department. It was a goal I had set for myself, a personal test to mark the progress of the evening. The shoes I had admired earlier in the day beckoned me, and with a mixture of anticipation and trepidation, I approached the aisles. But as I turned into the long, open gangway of the shoe department, my sense of safety dwindled. There, waiting by a seating area, was a man who seemed to be waiting for someone. As I walked towards him, our eyes briefly met, and I saw the flicker of recognition and judgment in his gaze. It was the kind of look that pierced right through the armor I had carefully constructed around myself. He turned discreetly to whisper something to his wife, who cast a quick, curious glance in my direction. My heart sank. The bubble of confidence burst as I felt their eyes on me, their silent assessment loud in my ears. For a moment, I froze, the earlier part of my outing crumbling under the weight of their scrutiny. The vulnerability I felt was paralyzing, a stark reminder of the risks involved in my journey towards authenticity. In a split second, I had to make a choice. I glanced at the shoes once more, the object of my initial excitement now a beacon of my exposure. With a heavy heart, I turned abruptly, retreating towards the safety of the stairs. Each step away from the shoe department was a mix of relief and disappointment. I had faced my fear, but at that moment, retreat felt like the only option. Back on the ground floor, I found Lisa, who immediately read the distress in my face. 
Let's step outside for a moment, she suggested gently, guiding me towards the exit. Outside, under the less harsh light of the street lamps, Lisa wrapped an arm around me. You did incredibly well, she reassured me, her voice soft but firm. Every step you took tonight was a victory, and every retreat? It's just a signal that we have more to learn and more strategies to develop. Her words, kind and wise, washed over me, soothing the sting of the encounter. I knew she was right. Tonight was not just about the successes, but also about understanding my limits and learning how to navigate them. With Lisa's unwavering support, I felt ready to continue this journey, no matter the challenges ahead. The evening had been a mixture of triumph and trial, but above all, it was a crucial step forward in my path to living openly and authentically. As Jamie and Lisa stepped out into the cool evening air, the bustling noise of the department store faded into the background, replaced by the muted sounds of the city at night. The street, with its glowing lamps and the occasional passerby hurrying along, felt like a sanctuary compared to the glaring lights and prying eyes of the shoe department. Jamie's heart still raced from the encounter, a cocktail of emotions swirling inside, embarrassment at being singled out, fear from the exposure, yet also a strange relief to be back outside, where anonymity once again cloaked them. Lisa's presence was comforting, her arm around Jamie's shoulders both protective and reassuring. I'm so proud of you, Lisa murmured as they found a quieter spot away from the main flow of pedestrians. You stepped out tonight, really stepped out. That takes courage. Her voice was warm, imbued with pride and understanding. Jamie nodded, taking a deep breath, the cool air calming. It was terrifying, Jamie admitted, the words thick with emotion. But somehow, it felt right too. Like I'm finally starting to live out loud, even if it's just in small steps. Lisa squeezed Jamie's hand, her smile gentle. Every step is progress, Jamie, and tonight was a big one. You've learned so much, and so have I. We now know what works, what doesn't, and what we can do better next time. They walked slowly, allowing the night to envelop them, a cocoon away from the earlier scrutiny. Lisa listened intently as Jamie recounted the moments of comfort and discomfort, analyzing the reactions of others and reflecting on their own feelings throughout the evening. It was daunting, yes, Jamie continued, but also incredibly liberating. To walk around, to be seen, to interact, it's something I've wanted for so long, and doing it, actually doing it, has taught me more than any amount of planning ever could. Lisa nodded, her eyes full of empathy. And it's informed us, hasn't it? We now have real experiences to draw from. We can strategize better for next time, tweak your look, maybe even choose a different time or place. There's so much room to grow from here. As they discussed, the earlier fear and embarrassment began to dissipate, replaced by a growing sense of determination. The night had indeed been a mix of highs and lows, but the lows were as informative as the highs were exhilarating. This was not the end of the journey, but an important midway point, a learning experience on which they could build. Reaching the end of the street, they paused, looking back at the path they had walked. Jamie felt a renewed sense of purpose and a clearer understanding of the road ahead. With Lisa's unwavering support, the journey seemed less daunting. We'll keep trying, keep testing the waters, Jamie resolved, a newfound resolve firming their voice. Tonight was just one night, one step. There will be many more, and I'm ready for them. As they turned to head back to the car, their steps were lighter, the weight of the night's challenges lifted by their shared resolve and the comforting blanket of the dark, welcoming city around them. The setback had become a setup for future successes, each moment of discomfort a guidepost for growth. Together, Jamie and Lisa walked on ready for whatever came next, fortified by the night's lessons and by each other's side. Back in the sanctuary of their hotel room, the soft hum of the city night outside, Jamie sat by the window, gazing out at the twinkling lights of Bath. The adrenaline of the evening had subsided, leaving a quiet space for reflection. The room felt cozy, a gentle fire crackling in the fireplace, casting a warm glow that contrasted sharply with the cold scrutiny of the department store. Jamie's thoughts were a tangle of disappointment and determination. The encounter at the shoe department had been a harsh reminder of the challenges lying ahead. Yet, amidst the discomfort, there was an undeniable spark of progress, a flame that had been kindled with each step they took as their true self. 
I did it, though, Jamie whispered to themselves, a smile flickering as they replayed the moments of walking through the city. Each step was a declaration, each moment of eye contact a test of their resolve. I was out there? Me? Jamie. Lisa, who had been quietly observing, came over and sat beside Jamie, her presence comforting. You were incredible, she said, taking Jamie's hand. Yes, there were tough moments, but think about how far you've come. You're no longer just dreaming of walking freely. You're doing it. Jamie nodded, the mix of emotions giving way to a clear sense of purpose. I need to keep refining my appearance, my walk, even my smile, they mused aloud. Every detail counts. But more than that, I need to keep strengthening my spirit. The outside will follow. The resolve to continue exploring their identity, to bridge the gap between how they felt inside and how they wished to be seen, was now stronger than ever. The outing had provided invaluable lessons, not just about the practical aspects of public appearances, but also about personal resilience and the power of supportive love. The night drifted on, and slowly, Jamie's initial disappointment transformed into a plan of action. They discussed with Lisa how to use their experiences from the evening to better prepare for the next outing. The crowd can be a friend, Jamie noted, a new calmness in their tone. I just need to walk confidently, blend in, yet stand out just as I am meant to. As dawn broke over Bath, the light creeping into their room painted everything it touched with a hue of possibility. Jamie woke up feeling strangely relaxed, the usual tension that came with hiding their identity nowhere to be found. Instead, there was an eagerness, a readiness to face the world again. After breakfast, Jamie and Lisa checked out of the hotel, their spirits buoyed by the promise of a new day. They walked together toward the car park, but at the last minute, Jamie paused. Let's walk a bit first, they suggested, and Lisa agreed with a supportive smile. They stepped out onto the busy streets of Bath, the morning rush providing the perfect backdrop for Jamie's renewed determination. This time, Jamie walked with less hesitation and more purpose, their steps sure and their head held high. Lisa walked by their side, not just as a supporter, but as a proud partner in Jamie's journey. The city, alive with the hustle and bustle of another day, seemed less intimidating and more welcoming. Jamie felt a part of it, their heart lighter and their future clearer. The journey wasn't just about arriving somewhere, it was about the bravery of each step. And as they walked, Jamie knew that with each step, they were not just moving through the city, they were moving forward in their life, one confident, authentic step at a time.